Hey guys, today we're going to be talking with Kirk about what it really takes to launch a product, what goes through the mind of someone who started not one but two businesses, and sort of what what it entails when looking for good talent as well for that product. So those are all the topics we're going to be talking about. I actually really like his new project, The Bug Squasher, and we're going to be talking a little bit about that as well, which is a software uh, product that is for developers in terms of keeping track of bugs and uh, working with clients, especially if you're interested in freelance, check out this video. I just want to take a moment to thank Kirk and the, the team at the Bug Squasher for sponsoring this video. If you're interested in uh, freelancing and you have a hard time keeping track of the bugs that, that you know clients are sending you and you want a better way than just getting it over email or in person in some cases, um, check them out at thebugsquasher.com. You'll also notice that there's a link in the description where you can use coupon code CODING360 and get a big old discount on the um, on the application. So check it out and let's go ahead and dive into the interview. All right. All right. I appreciate you coming on the channel today, Kirk. Can you mind telling us a little about, a bit about yourself? Yeah, sure. So I'm the CEO of two companies, Treehouse 51 and The Bug Squasher. Treehouse 51 is a digital marketing agency based out of Newport Beach. And The Bug Squasher is our new app that annotates tracks and reports website bugs. Nice. So um, one thing that really interests me about you was that you've, you've now essentially started two companies and are CEO of two companies. What's that process like starting something from scratch? It is probably one of the most humbling experiences of my life. Uh, you know, those people who are like, we got like a billion bucks, we're living large, it's successful, it's all easy breezy. That's definitely not us. <laughs> It's definitely been just like, okay, a lot of things are on you to figure out from picking the talent, to finding the clients, to making the product better. So a lot of just humbling things where if you work the standard nine to five life, you don't really come across that stuff. So on, on that note of picking the talent, because a, a good portion of my audience is you know, junior developers or aspiring developers, what sort of things stand out to you when you are trying to find you know, the best fit for, for your company? The biggest thing I look for when we bring on like new developers is not experts. Uh, I, I can't stress that enough. In a world where everybody has like a Twitter page, LinkedIn page, they're on Fiverr, Upwork, Golance, all these competitive websites, everybody says, I'm an expert at XYZ. We are not experts. So I look for people who are more hungry, more people who are like, I'm a student. I do really great stuff. I do really good stuff. I'm always learning. I'm always trying to do more. That to me says a lot more than the person who sends me the resume. That's like, hey, we're an expert. I've been doing this for X amount of time. Nice. I I have found that a, a similar experience. We have been interviewing developers, and it seems that the people who have less years experience that are still hungrier are more up to date on technology and and still learning. While I, I feel like the developer with fifteen years experience sometimes gets a little lax. Yeah, I mean that that happens sometimes. You know, you, you get you get so much years under your belt that you you I don't know if you get comfortable, but you just don't bother with the new tech, and that's it's dangerous because there is that guy who's you know who's 21 years old and he's on a uh, on um there's a lot of some websites like Udemy where they're just looking up new stuff. They're on YouTube. They're learning new things, creating new samples. Nice. So when it comes to actually starting a project you have to be very passionate about it and so when it comes to the the bug squasher you mind telling people where the idea idea came from a little bit about the product yeah sure so the bug squasher came because we had we had a client and she was an older lady she was like in her 70s and uh, she sent us this email that was probably like 10,000 words long and we went through the email and somewhere in the middle it said just change this image and I was like, oh, Jesus, this is this was so painful. And I'm sure like everybody, every developer has a story like that, where it's just they get a text message, Skype, email that's just really, really long. And you just need to know like what's the problem, what page, what what device you're on. And so that lady hated us. She was like, You guys don't know what you're doing. And I had to ask the logical questions like, are you on a phone? Are you on your desktop? Chrome, Firefox. Of course, she was on Internet Explorer. And so you know, going back and forth, I was like, I just wish there was a better way to c collect website bugs. And that was the birth of it. So the bug squasher it annotates, tracks, and reports website bugs. That's the, the main key things. It's all about streamlining communication, 
Uh, on the back end, there's there's a lot of like project management tools out there like Asana, Basecamp, Podio, where, where they'll get you for having team members on it, they'll charge you more. We don't do that, it's all unlimited seats. You can have as many team members as you want. Uh, you can add it to as many dev sites as you want. And in the future, not too distant future, um, I thought it'd be cool for people to like, you know, annotate the bug, right? I was like, yeah, great, you annotate, we get all this information from you, your IP address, what browser, what type of device. And then I was like, can we make it simpler? And so we found a way to make it simpler. In the not too distant future, we're gonna release a Chrome app that lets you record. So if you have a client who says 60 or 70 and not too tech savvy and they need to report this problem, they can record themselves saying, hey, here's where the problem is and still collect all this information. You actually kind of answered my uh, next question. I was going to ask, uh, mainly because I feel like a lot of times people never get started on products and they have trouble delivering them because they don't they don't really understand the minimum minimal viable product to have something that you can ship and then improve upon. So it already sounds like you've shipped something and now you have the the next features that are going to be released. Is yeah, that a conscious decision. Yeah, absolutely. I think um, like version one, Bookswasher version one has all these features and. It's really exciting for us, but we don't want it just to stop there. We want to, we want to, we want to really get in the business of streamlining communication. We want everybody who uses our tool to say, wow, our clients liked us before. They love us even more now. And the same thing with like your team. If you work with freelancers or developers or development teams or marketing teams, same deal. Uh, in that story, when I communicated the issue to my team, they were annoyed. They were like, again, this is happening again. We don't have that anymore. Now it's like, this is easy peasy. They just send us, they just capture the bug and we have all the information we need. Yeah, I, I know I wish I had something like that when I was um, doing some free, <laughs> freelance development. So on, on that note, is this more of a enterprise or t enterprise application or is this for the freelancer? You know, how is it priced and what what is, who's the target audience? Yeah, so price wise, we start at $29.99 a month. Um, I do have a, a promo code for you guys. It's coding360, no space, and 360 the number. I'll, I'll send you a, well, you know how to spell code. We'll, we'll put it in the description below. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, it's for, I hope that someday this will be the standard for working with websites. I hope that I'll never meet another freelance developer or developer who says, hey, I got an email with all these changes. Uh, my vision, my dream is that it's just standard practice. You work with a client, you have the bug squasher for them to communicate those bugs to you. Uh, right now, uh, we just launched. We're in week two and a half. So we're still testing it out there, still pushing it out there. I think uh, the target audience, uh, target audience probably developers, web shops, uh, freelancers, those type of people. Now, you say you just launched. Did you do some, some beta testing? And if so, what is that process like? So yeah, so we did do some beta testing um, on our internal client. So I own the other company I own is Trio51, it's a marketing ad agency. And we have some a really just incredible clients. and. We told them what we were doing because we've had similar experiences where they've sent us notes and we have just great relationships with them. And we said, hey, would you mind if we put this on your site and tested it? We won't charge you for it. And any feedback you use, we'll take it into consideration. Maybe we'll use it, maybe we won't. And everybody was really receptive to that. So that was pretty awesome. Nice. When you're, when you're developing this product, you had, you had a vision. What's the, what, if you could communicate your vision and the sort of takeaway, what, what is it? I think the vision is there's a better way to work with clients. There's a better way to communicate. Um, if you don't address your, your process, if you don't address communication, which is so huge in process, you'll always be a couple days behind. You'll always be behind on the project. There'll always be that client that's like, why isn't this done? And it'll always it'll take up your time, money, resources. And it doesn't have to be that way. There's tools out there. Um, obviously, I want to push the bug squasher. The bug squasher can help you in streamline communication. Nice. Well, I appreciate you taking the time and coming on here and uh, sharing a little bit about what it's like to push a new product out there because so few people are all talk and it's nice to hear someone who's about doing it, right? And you've done it twice now, so I appreciate that. Yeah, thank you. Thanks so much for the time. Hey guys, there was two features that when I was looking on their site that we didn't cover in the interview, I thought they were kind of cool, so we should mention it, is that the Bug Squasher has the ability to whitelist IP addresses so the clients can only see the tool on their live site and no one else is going to have access to those bugs. And then also uh, there's reporting, right? So not only are we tracking bugs, we're going to find out how effective we were in fixing them and be able to display those visually for clients and for yourself. 
All right, so today's question is from Human151. He says, Dylan, good morning. I was curious, in a professional setting, do devs ever use vanilla JavaScript? Or do devs just use Angular or React? Basically, would uh, would code consist of Angular plus some vanilla JS code or all just Angular? I don't know if I'm asking the right question, but I hope you get the point. Yes, I do get the point. So you have to first define what vanilla JS is to you. To me, what vanilla JavaScript is, is the standard way of manipulating the DOM and the standard way of getting values out of the template and communicating that. So in that aspect, in most professional settings, you're going to be using, you know, Angular or React to do that because it's there's a lot of setup sometimes when it comes to that. And it's very complex, needlessly complex. Um, so is it important to understand how vanilla JavaScript works? Absolutely. Um, have I ever had a professional role um, or worked at a company in any capacity that this was how they manipulated the DOM? No. Every company I've ever worked at, even before I was a developer that were software companies, always used a framework. Does that mean it doesn't exist? No, it doesn't. I, um, I had an interview with Nintendo not too long ago, and they when they build their websites, do vanilla JavaScript apparently. And um, that was one of the things that they asked me. So uh, I would say it's more common than not that you're gonna be using a framework of some sort, but um, you definitely should understand at least the basics. And that's things like how to get values out of the DOM, um, you know, traditional Ajax requests, um, how to, you know, update a class, CSS. Um, you know, there's about 10 or 15 things that you should really know about vanilla JavaScript. Would I spend the, the bulk of your study on it? Absolutely not. I want to thank the team at the Bug Swasher and Kirk specifically for coming on the channel and talking about us about their product and uh, thank them one more time for sponsoring this video. If you're interested in their their product, there's a link in the description below or you can click the card to take you there and use coupon code CODING360 to get added discount.